What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video where we will have a big update on the Jude Bellingham transfer situation. Fabrizio Romano dropped a major major update on the Bellingham to Liverpool transfer story and also we will have many other news around Liverpool FC and what you can expect for from the rest of the transfer window. So if you enjoy these leave a like, subscribe if you are new around here. And Fabrizio Mano said that Liverpool are one of the front runners to sign Jude Bellingham and we are heavily interested in him. But it depends on when Borussia Dortmund will make Bellingham available. Fabrizio Mano said, let's, see, uh, let's wait and see what Borussia Dortmund's plans are for this summer and next summer. Uh, but Liverpool will be 100% in the running for Jude Bellingham and I'm sure that uh, next summer if, if Dortmund decide that Jude Bellingham has to stay and they are not selling him at any price, basically Liverpool can't uh, sign him this summer. But then uh, next summer I think Bellingham will get his wish. The similar thing happened with Jadon Sancho. Man United wanted to sign him one year earlier uh, than when he eventually went and, and Dortmund just told Jadon Sancho stay with us for one more season and then next summer you can go to any club of your choice if they pay the transfer fee and I think because they already lost Erling Haaland this will be the similar scenario with Jude Bellingham. Fabrizio Mano also said that Dortmund are convinced that Bellingham will stay this summer and he's ready to stay. I see no problems between the two parties but Liverpool will be in the running for Jude Bellingham next summer 100% and I think it's actually a good thing because uh, he's still only 18 years old and he can mature, grow, develop and just get better next season playing for the whole season for Borussia Dortmund. He will be one of the first names on the team sheet. It's incredible that at 18 years old Bellingham is already one of the biggest stars of Borussia Dortmund and I think he wants to sign for Liverpool and Liverpool have the patience to wait for their transfer targets to become available. We did the same with, uh, Fabrizio, with, uh, with Fabinho, with Alisson, with Van Dijk and even with, with uh, you know, other players. So Liverpool will definitely wait for Jude Bellingham. Hopefully Bellingham won't demand crazy wages and Liverpool can convince him that you should accept the like uh, mid-tier -tier wages when it comes to maybe the top 10 or top 15 clubs in European football, Liverpool are offering wages in the middle, I think. We are not offering crazy wages like Chelsea, Man City or Paris Saint-Germain, but still Bellingham would earn more than enough, uh, in my opinion, even if he accepts uh, moderate wages. And if he does well, the wage will rise. But Liverpool always extend the contracts and give uh, 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 and update the wages and give the better wages to players who earned that on the pitch. And Neil Jones also dropped a major update on uh, all things uh, about Liverpool FC and uh, and he said that uh, replacing Mane will be tough uh, because the Mane, Firmino, Salah trio has combined to 338 goals in just the previous five seasons and even last season they contributed with 65 goals between them which is absolutely an incredible goal return. But now the question is whether Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp can build a second great Liverpool attack which can match or maybe achieve the similar amount of uh, goals between you know, the front three. So the next uh, front three could be Jota, Diaz and Darwin Nunez and hopefully in the next five years they can contribute with 300 goals as well even though that will be very very hard. But the process is already well underway. And in terms of forward options, Liverpool already have the pieces in place. And I think Mane leaving will actually benefit uh, Diogo Jota a lot because last season when Diaz went in, when Diaz came in in January, Mane went up front. Jota was not always starting for Liverpool and he is a brilliant player and he can score easily 20-25 goals even though last season he sometimes wasn't starting he still finished the season with 21 goals in all competitions 10 more than Firmino and Mane only scored 23 goals so Jota matched Mane's goal return even though Jota probably started less games than Sadio Mane last season and also remember when Salah and Mane were at the Africa Cup of Nations, Jota was the player who scored the goals to keep Liverpool winning in the League Cup semi-finals in the Premier League. So he contributed massively to Liverpool's cause. 
And actually many pundits and many journalists are suggesting that Liverpool will experiment with a 4-2-3-1 or even a, maybe a 4-4-2 formation next season. Uh, so we could have Darwin Nunez and Jota playing up front next to each other and we could have Salah and Luis Diaz on the wing and of course two holding midfielders as well. So that could be actually a very very exciting front line. The players are certainly there. To, to do this, uh, Salah, Diaz, Jota and Nunez and Carvalho, Klopp has five fantastic, fabulous attackers at his disposal and maybe Firmino's uh, days of being a nailed on starter are gone but he's still a very selfless and very intelligent player and he will be a real asset for Liverpool next season. And also you have to consider that Jota's best work came at Liverpool when he was starting as a striker, as a centre forward. But at Wolves he also often excelled as a second striker alongside Raul Jimenez. So it is not hard to see Jota sometimes in a similar role at Liverpool, playing off Darwin Nunez and complementing each other. Because Jota has a tendency to hover on the left hand side and drift wide sometimes and then arrives late in the box. But we shouldn't expect a massive change in the way Liverpool play. They will change a little bit tactics and tweak the system and I think uh, you know that, that's needed when Darwin Nunez comes in. He's a classic number nine, a tall player who also has pace and who can press from the front but Liverpool need to uh, play uh, in a way that complements Darwin Nunez's qualities and gets the best out of him. But Liverpool will generally uh, try and dominate the ball and high press the opposition and create overalls in wide areas with the fullback Trent and Robertson bombing forward. I'm pretty sure Liverpool will persist with the high defensive line with Van Dijk commanding the, the halfway line and commanding his own penalty area when it's needed. But what Liverpool now have is a great fact flexibility and perhaps a little more unpredictability when it comes to team selection. Now you can't really predict what will be Liverpool's main front line and depends on, depending on what kind of style of play the opposition will play against Liverpool, we can implement different formations, different tactics, different um, you know, style of play suited more to breaking down the opposition whatever is required. And we already saw signs of this last season when uh, 21 players featured in 20 or more games for Liverpool and that is very rare that you have such a big squad contributing with uh, playing a lot of games. Uh, Liverpool have built a squad of players that can all contribute when needed. The, even the loss of Mane and uh, other players like Minamino and Origi shouldn't jam damage that because Liverpool basically replaced Mane with Luis Diaz in January, we replaced Minamino with Fabio Carvalho and Divo Corrigi doesn't, doesn't really have a, an out-and-out -out replacement but we already had you know seven great forwards last season, now we have five but Harvey Elliott can play on the wing as well if it's needed. And of course a lot of eyes will be naturally on, on Darwin Nunez because he will make his debut given the reputation that he has with the price tag that he arrives with but Carvalho is also viewed as a forward option. He can play up front and as a number 10 and he's pushing for inclusion and Firmino will be determined to end his Liverpool career on a high. As for Jota, he knows how important he is to Liverpool at his best. A pressing monster, that's how um, assistant manager Pep Yinders called Diogo Jota a world-class finisher. That's what Jurgen Klopp said about Jota. Uh, so I, I expect Jota to be back to his best next season and keep firing in the goals and hopefully he can get 25, maybe even 30 goals next season with regular playing time. So let me know how do you see Liverpool playing next season. I think it will be very interesting to see how Jurgen Klopp works out the best formation to get the best out of Darwin Nunez. And do you think Liverpool need to make more transfers, more signings? I think it more depends on outgoings. If we sell too many players, then maybe we need to sign one more. But if we only sell one or two more players, Neko Williams is rumored to, to maybe being sold. Uh, but we already have Calvin Ramsey coming in. Stephen Penner said, I, and I quote him, I don't believe Liverpool need to make more signings this summer. Where would you put them? They have made already three new transfers. They have brought in 
Fabio Carvalho, Calvin Ramsey, who are two players for the future. They have also brought in Darwin Nunez, who is another player for the future to a certain extent. But ha they ha it has cost the Liverpool a lot of money. Per players will have to leave as there isn't enough space to fit everybody in. Keeping the players happy now is a hard job as it is to jam all of these players into the team. I can see a number of players leaving with Liverpool beginning to recoup and uh, generate some of the money that they have spent. That just makes business sense. And I think Liverpool now built a squad which will be suited to challenging on all fronts. Maybe uh, we won't take the League Cup as, serious, as seriously only if we, if we go to the latter stages. But even our second team is pretty brilliant if you think about it. Even our second team, would, it could contain, you know, Fabio Carvalho up front. It could contain Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, Naby Keita. And at the back, we could have uh, Matip, uh, Konate in our second team. Or Joe Gomez and, and uh, Matip in our second team. With Calvin Ramsey on one side, Simikas on the other. And Kelleher in goal. It's a pretty strong and solid second team that Liverpool built and hopefully that will help Liverpool cope with the grueling schedule which will be absolutely brutal. 64 games possible for Liverpool next season as well plus a one and a half month long break in the middle of the season because of that ridiculous Qatar World Cup. It still absolutely blows my mind that uh, Qatar could bribe their way to a World Club held in the desert so they had to switch it to winter it's absolutely ludicrous and it shows that how rotten and corrupt fifa is but that's for another video that topic but uh, um, thankfully not all of liverpool's players will play at the world cup salah for example will get a big break in the in the middle of the season and hopefully that will help him score even more goals than last season and McManaman also thinks uh, that Liverpool will only sign a new players if they sell maybe five or more players. There's talk of Neko Williams leaving, which is completely correct, as he needs to start playing football regularly. And uh, Annette Phillips is in the same boat. They have both had great seasons with both Fulham and Bournemouth after helping their clubs get promoted. At the moment though, there are just too many bodies to keep, pre keep bringing people in. So first, there will be some outgoings. It's already happening, Minamino uh, already is on his way to Monaco. Divo Corrigi is on his way to AC Milan. Fabrizio Mano confirmed that everything is uh, settled. Origi just needs to pass his medical and then he will be announced officially as a new AC Milan player. Darren Bent also claims that Diogo Jota can easily replace Sadio Mane's numbers. He said, of course you can't directly replace Mane because he's just too good, but if Luis Diaz gets his numbers up in terms of goals and assists and Jota uh, will keep scoring goals like last season, he was kind of the forgotten man Jota towards the end of last season, but he stepped in and he was brilliant. Diaz and Firmino are still there and obviously Salah speaks for himself, so they have still got so many different options in that front free area. And I think Darwin Nunez, in my opinion, if he stays fit and if he plays a lot of games, he will score around 15 to 20 goals, which is on average almost the same as Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane averaged 20 goals a season, so if Darwin Nunez could get 15 goals, then, uh, then basically you already almost replaced Mane when it comes to numbers. And it's pretty sad to see that Wijnaldum uh, had an absolute disastrous first season at Paris Saint-Germain. They are, they are already looking to move him on, already looking to sell him. And Wijnaldum wants to come back to the Premier League. Liverpool are not interested him, in him. So Everton, Leicester, West Ham and Wolves are the four teams that are interested, that are interested in Wijnaldum. Please Wijnaldum, whatever you do, just don't go to Everton. Just don't go to the blue side of Liverpool because it, it just, uh, it's just not uh, cor correct. It wouldn't feel right. Wijnaldum is a Liverpool legend in my eyes. He helped Liverpool win so many trophies. So I think that, uh, that he should go to either Leicester or Wolves or West Ham. They're all decent side club, sized clubs in my opinion. I would have loved uh, Serge Gnabry to be Mane's replacement because Mane, Gnabry's future is up in the air after Mane arrived. He only has, I think, one year left on his contract. And sport, Bayern's sporting director Salih Hamidzic has said that we really want to keep Gnabry. I hope that he chooses Bayern. If a player doesn't want to decide for the club, then we can find a solution that makes everyone happy. 
Right now I can't see Liverpool signing another forward player after spending 65 million on Darwin Nunez. The pounds that is, uh, plus the add-ons of course, but uh, if Serge Gnabry uh, becomes available on the market next summer, I think Liverpool should go for him because he's a brilliant player and if, if you can sign a, a player like that for um, a free transfer then that would be absolutely fantastic business from a Liverpool point of view and of course Jurgen Klopp knows him well because he knows the Bundesliga very well but yeah let me know what do you think and Liverpool will be desperate to win the Premier League title next season after you know missing out on the title with 15 minutes to go Liverpool looked like they could become champions and Brad Frieder said that, that uh, usually you don't go through the season without injuries or suspensions in midfield now that Mane is out and Nunez is in I think Jurgen Klopp and his staff will be focusing on midfield that's where they will be looking it will take a special player to come in because he will have to be better than what they have or younger with the potential of being better. I don't think Jurgen Klopp will need the fans or me to tell him that. I think that's a fair assessment of where things are. If they endure a season like a couple of years ago, where their midfield is depleted like their defense was, then it will be hard for them. The big difference is now that Liverpool, now Liverpool have numbers in midfield. We have Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, and Nambi Keita as uh, backup players, so that's four midfield backups uh, and also Fabio Carvalho can play in midfield, so if you count Carvalho that's five players in midfield to back up the current uh, midfield trio of uh, Henderson, Fabinho and Thiago so I think Liverpool have more than enough options in my opinion in midfield and the BBC pundit uh, Nigel Rio Coker said that Mane took Liverpool to another level and clearly it is a big loss but Liverpool are always planning ahead and they have got the structure and pieces in place to deal with uh, big players like Mane leaving. From a business perspective it's the right time to sell Mane. Other clubs play hardball over players and then they lose them on free transfers a year later. If they, I think if they could learn from how Liverpool know when to get let go of uh, their players. Uh, and yeah, it's true, Mane uh, probably wanted ridiculous wages and Liverpool were not paying money £400,000 per week, I mean we, are not, we aren't even paying Salah that amount and Salah probably is the only player in the Liverpool squad who deserves a ludicrous wage like that so the only solution was to sell money right now because we can't afford to lose money on a free transfer and potentially Firmino and Salah on a free transfer as well so let me know what they think in the comments below and thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this, have a nice day, goodbye!